Put down your pitchforks guys, because today's GPU related video is going to be a bit different from our recent AMD versus Nvidia comparisons. Instead of picking a pair of graphics cards targeting a certain price range, we'll be comparing AMD's Radeon 300 series to determine which offers gamers the most bang for their buck at the highly popular 1080p resolution. This means we'll be heavily focused on price versus performance. As always, I'll be using Newegg.com as my baseline for pricing, and therefore all prices will be based on the US currency. Ideally, we'll be looking for an average of 60 frames per second, though we understand some gamers will want upwards of 120 frames per second for their 120Hz to 144Hz gaming monitors. For testing, we've selected five relatively new games and one upcoming game. Battlefield 4, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, Watch Dogs, Thief, Dragon Age Inquisition, and the early access title is Ashes of the Singularity, which has been tested using DirectX 12. Fraps was used to measure frame rate performance, and we recorded 90 seconds of gameplay in each game. That said, please note Ashes of the Singularity was tested using the built in benchmark as Fraps doesn't work yet under DirectX 12. Also, to be absolutely clear, the gameplay wasn't recorded using Fraps, just the frame rate, so there was no impact on the gaming performance. So resist flaming me in the comments section if you can. Additionally, all graphics cards used were clocked according to the default AMD specifications, and overclocking performance won't be taken into account here. Testing takes place exclusively at 1080p using a Core i5-6600K processor with the latest graphics card and system drivers under Windows 10. First up in our benchmarks, we have Ashes of the Singularity, which as I mentioned isn't actually released yet, though the early access build is quite stable and AMD is already delivering some very solid DirectX 12 performance. Since DirectX 12 doesn't rely on the display driver for performance optimizations like DirectX 11 does, things shouldn't change too much. Anyway, since this is one of the first DirectX 12 games to become available through early access and it features a great built-in benchmark, we decided to include it. As you can see, this highly demanding video game calls for quite a bit of GPU power even at 1080p. The Radeon R9 380 was overwhelmed with an average of just 26 frames per second. That said, the 390 did a lot better, producing 41 frames per second, making it just 3 frames per second slower than the 390X, and not a great deal slower than the 53 frames per second of the Fury X. Cost-wise, the 390 makes the most sense here as it was the first GPU to deliver smooth gameplay, though the 380 does quite well at almost $7.70 per frame. The 390X costs a little over $9.50 per frame, which isn't good value at all, and the Fury is even worse at almost $10.80. And let's not talk about the Fury X. Battlefield 4 was tested using the maximum in-game quality settings along with 2x MSAA. The R7 360 struggled with just 33 frames per second, while the R7 370 provided a much better experience with 46 frames per second. For around 60 frames per second, the R9 380 is required. Punching well past the 60 frames per second barrier was the R9 390 with 80 frames per second, and we find that the 390X isn't much faster with an average of just 84 frames per second. Moving to the R9 Nano provided another boost in performance as we hit 98 frames per second. The standard Fury proved to be very fast with 100 frames per second, while the Fury X was good for 108 frames per second. Now let's look at how much each frame is costing you for each card. The $650 Fury X came at a cost of $6 per frame, while the Fury was considerably better value at $5.50 per frame. As expected, the R9 Nano represents the worst value of the current AMD lineup as it's a niche gaming product designed for ultra compact gaming machines. The R9 390X looks to be rather good value at $5 per frame when compared to even the R9 Fury, but it isn't until we filter down to the R9 390 that $5 seems like a rough deal. This is because the R9 390 comes at a cost of $3.75 per frame, making it 25% better value than the R9 390 and a little over 30% better value than the R9 Fury. The R9 380 was better value again, and we found that the R9 380, R7 370 and R9 360 all delivered a similar price per frame. That said, the R7 360 was too slow at 1080p using the maximum quality settings and the same really applies to the R7 370 as well. Dragon Age Inquisition played surprisingly well on the R7 360 considering the quality settings. Disabling anti-aliasing would probably be enough for smooth gameplay as it managed 31 frames per second with 2x MSAA enabled. 
The R7 370 was slightly faster with 38 frames per second, while the R9 380 was considerably faster, averaging 55 frames per second. Moving to the R9 390, we see another huge jump in performance with an average of 80 frames per second, while the 390X wasn't a great deal faster, averaging 84 frames per second. The Nano was good for 92 frames per second, while the Fury pressed on for 94 frames per second. As expected, the Fury X provided the best performance, averaging 97 frames per second. The price per frame in Dragon Age Inquisition is quite similar to what we saw in Battlefield 4. Again, the 390, 380, 370 and 360 all delivered similar bang for your buck as the cost per frame ranged between $3.50 and $4. The 390X then jumped up to $5, while the Fury cost $5.85. The Fury X didn't represent great value at a cost of $6.70 per frame, while the Nano was even worse at $7 per frame. As was the case with the previously tested games, the 360 is only good for around 30 frames per second when using the maximum in-game quality settings. Meanwhile, the 370 isn't a great deal faster with 39 frames per second. Performance becomes acceptable with the 380, which averaged 54 frames per second, while the 390 blows the gap wide open with 75 frames per second. After the 390, the gains are again quite minimal as we end up with 93 frames per second with the Fury X. The cost per frame between the 360, 370, 380 and 390 is extremely close in Thief, with just 30 cents separating the cheapest and most expensive options. The 390X costs $1.25 more per frame than the 390, and things only get worse as we climb the AMD food chain. The Fury X averages silky smooth 98 frames per second in Watch Dogs, while the standard Fury was good for 95 frames per second. The Nano averaged 92 frames per second, followed by the 390X with 86 frames per second. Once again, the 390 was within striking range of the 390X as it averaged 80 frames per second. From there, we drop all the way down to 56 frames per second with the 380, and then down to 41 frames per second with the 370. The 360 was unable to handle the maximum in-game quality settings, as it averaged just 26 frames per second. The 360's sluggish performance in Watch Dogs hurt its price per frame rating, making it only slightly better than the 390X. Again, the 380 delivered the most bang for your buck, though it was closely followed by the 370 and 390. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt was tested with all the eye candy turned on, which included Hairworks, which runs very well on AMD hardware now, thanks to a number of game optimizations over the past few months. Even so, the 360 was written off with just 21 frames per second, and the 370 wasn't much better as it averaged just 29 frames per second. Even the 380 struggled here, though it was technically playable at 37 frames per second. That said, the 390 delivered a noticeably better experience with 54 frames per second, while the Fury X wasn't a great deal faster with 68 frames per second. Here we see that the 360, 370, 380 and 390 all came at a similar cost per frame at around $5 to $5.50. The Nano doubled that figure as it blew out to $10 per frame and the Fury X wasn't much better at $9.55 per frame. Measuring the cost per frame isn't something I've done before but I found it to be very interesting and I hope you guys did as well. Obviously this data is highly dependent on the price we set for each graphics card and that being the case we went with what we believe to be the typical asking price for each card and excluded any sales or rebates. Although we didn't test a huge range of games, the 6 games that we did test with provided fairly consistent results and should paint an accurate picture. The card that delivered the best bang for your buck was the Radian R9 380. Overall it came at a cost of $3.94 per frame, assuming a purchase price of $200 and with an average of 52 frames per second it was just fast enough for perfectly smooth gameplay at 1080p with all the eye candy turned up. The R7 370 was a close second at $3.97 per frame, though it only averaged 39 frames per second making it a bit too slow for smooth 1080p gaming. That said, if you only have around $150 to spend then it does represent exceptional value just be prepared to scale down some of the quality settings. The only other worthwhile alternative is the Radeon R9 390, which provided a little over 40% more performance than the 380 on average, while costing just 6% more per frame. Assuming a purchase price of $300, the 390 costs on average $4.16 per frame, which is remarkable value. Beyond that, things got out of control, with the 390X costing almost $5.50 per frame, the Fury around $6.30 per frame, and the Fury X over $7 per frame. Therefore, we recommend the Radeon R9 380 as the best value AMD graphics card for 1080p gaming. Note we tested the 2GB model as we feel it represents the best value, especially at 1080p, but if you can get the 4GB version for a similar price, then by all means do so. 
Just be careful about paying a notable premium for a larger memory buffer that you likely won't use. If you can foot the bill for the 390, then we suggest you do it as it works out to be roughly the same in terms of value, but you end up with a better gaming experience. Finally, for those of you that want to study the graphs in a more practical format, we've uploaded them all to our forum at hardwareunbox.com, so be sure to check that out. I'll provide a direct link in the video description. Thanks for watching another Hardware Unbox comparison. I'm your host Matt and I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. Hit like, hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. Yeah.